Our next guest is a journalist and anchor of The Source, which airs weeknights at 9 on CNN. Please welcome back to the show, Caitlin Collins. It's nicer to be here in person than on a computer screen, which is the last time we Yes, talked. we Zoomed last time, and this is a far better guest experience. So yeah, I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that they're here as well. Oh, this is an awesome audience. Hi, guys. So you are a year in uh, to being in New York City. Uh, yes. We're very happy to have you. And you uh, host the, the 9 o'clock hour on CNN now. You've been a White House correspondent. You did the morning show. How much different is your life logistically getting to do a show in the evening as opposed to the morning? I mean, it's a 3.30 a.m. Uh, wake-up call versus a 3.30 p.m. wake-up call, so it's a little bit more amenable to do the 9 p.m. I mean, 3.30 a.m. was so brutal, and every night I went to sleep just praying that I did not oversleep, which luckily yeah. I never did. But I was we were talking about it's Halloween, and obviously we both live in the village, and what I was saying is that, you know, there's that massive parade that comes through. Yes. That was the night before our first show last year. So I went to bed at 8 p.m., like with Michael Jackson thriller blaring in the background. Yeah. And I was just laying there being like, I'm going to oversleep for my first day. Now, I also imagine at 3.30 a.m. when you're going to work, there's still some zombies out there. Yeah. There might it's be, a, there's City. still some action, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've always said, and I know you do this a, a very well, and you do this a lot more than we do, but one of the hardest things and one of the least exciting or interesting things about interviewing politicians is how they answer the question they wanted you to ask them as opposed to the one you did. Yes. And I see you deal with this all the time, especially when people are running for higher office. This is where they, they just have this message and they stick to this message. This just happened with you and Ron DeSantis. How do you deal with it in the moment when they're just giving that answer? It's always going to happen because any politician is like media trained and yes. they know to just kind of listen and they just don't answer. And I think a lot of times people feel pressed for time and so they got to move on. They have a lot of subjects they want to ask about. I'll just stay on it all day because I think it's important to just push on that one subject. And I think the hardest thing is listening to them. It's just making sure you're, you're not getting an answer. And sometimes you can't force them to answer, but I always like to point out when they don't. Yes. And then <laughs> do they get frustrated <laughs> Which when you they point don't it love. out? Yeah. I mean, I think they'd still <laughs> rather you point it out than actually have to answer the question. You know what I think the key is? Is you have to be comfortable with it being silent. You have to be comfortable with asking them and just don't fill the space. Just let it sit yeah. there. <laughs> that's, uh, if you ever have kids, that's a good thing to do as well. <laughs> I, 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 there was a cookie here, and now it's gone. So let's just think about it. I don't know. I think I'd rather. I think a kid might be better at that than a politician. Yeah, sometimes. they actually are. One of your jobs as well is reporting on difficult subjects in difficult places, uh, dangerous places. You just uh, a week ago were in Israel. Um, what is it like when you have these very fresh wounds, and then also things that are happening in real time? Uh, these tragedies, and you're telling these stories. You're over there to help, you know, inform us. Like, what is that? feel like? I've covered a lot of things. And obviously, the White House is a challenging beat. It's a serious beat. I think the trip to Israel was one of the toughest things that I've ever covered. And it was because what you were witnessing and what these people were going through. I mean, the entire country is grieving very much so. And we had been there maybe about two weeks after the attack had happened. And just going through the airport, going into the city. I mean, Tel Aviv is usually like Miami. It's so fun. Everyone's out. Everything's closed. Everything's quiet. A lot of people likened it to, to New York after 9-11 when everything was just really quiet about until this time of year. And it, it's a nuanced and complicated story. It has a lot of different angles to it. And I think the most important thing that we thought about being there, you know, typically on my show, we think of what's the news? How do we press these lawmakers? It was different being there because it's you're dealing with humanity and you're facing parents whose kids have been kidnapped and who have been through this unimaginable loss. And that's kind of, that was the approach we took, was just being human and approaching it from a human perspective. I, I certainly appreciate uh, yourself and any uh, journalist who's made the choice to be present there because I think it's very important to have uh, people on the ground. Yeah, it's something we, I mean, I've been messaging with doctors from Gaza almost daily, just trying to get a sense of what's happening there. And these people are just living through a, a life-changing event. I mean, there's always been conflict in the Middle East, but what they're living through right now is something that, I mean, these are people at the center of it. These are moms and dads and brothers and sisters. And it's just important to, to tell their stories and they want their stories to be told. I think that's another important aspect of it.
Um, there is no easy way to transition out of that story into what I want to ask you about next, but I will simply say that you are a fan of Alabama football. <laughs> like, just like a casual fan, like you are nothing, the biggest, nothing like serious. You are the biggest Alabama football fan I know on Twitter. <laughs> and uh, how, has, how would you say this season has gone? <laughs> no, I'm genuinely curious about this. I mean, you seem unhappy I say this about it. with the backing of 100,000 people in Brian Denny Stadium that it hasn't been our best season. Okay, well, that's a little unfair <laughs> because all you ever have are the best seasons. I mean, you're seven and one, you're ranked eighth in the nation, and you're walking around being like, Ugh. I'll tell you, I'm going to the game this weekend. I'm going to Tuscaloosa on Saturday. It's my first game that I've been to this season. Typically, I try to do two or three. Okay. And uh, hopefully, it goes well. But I mean, it has been a brutal season. We lost to Texas. Uh -huh. We've nearly lost to some. Oh, are there Texas fans here? <laughs> I, yeah, no, you just you stay till the end. Did you just do that? Just be a good sport and stay till the end. <laughs> Raise your hands again. No, I'm just kidding. Um, are you a fun vibe during a game? Or, no, oh okay. my God. Everyone is always like, I want to go to the game with you. Like all my friends from who have never been to the South, they're like, I'd love to come. I'm like, sure, you can come and hang out with me before the game, after, if we win during the game, yeah. like I'm not talking, I'm yeah. like sitting there, I'm watching, I'm So serious. what about in New York City, someone says, I wanna come over to your apartment, oh, no. I Okay, no, you this watch alone? When I moved to Washington, D.C., I moved there a month after I graduated from Alabama, and on Saturdays, people in Washington would be like, let's go to brunch, let's go do this. And I was like, it's, it's Saturday, like yeah. we're not going anywhere that's not within like 30 feet of a television, and it's gotta be 50 inches at least. Yeah. And they have to turn the sound on. It's amazing. It's so cool that you overcame this mental illness. <laughs> I haven't. By the way, I have it too. I just have it with pro football. You guys, that's Caitlin Collins, everyone. The source of Caitlin Collins airs weeknights at 9 on CNN. Stick around. Be right back.